All right, welcome back to Media Unlocks audio series. Today, we're going to talk about mixers and recorders, including direct to camera. The mixer is the thing that's in between the microphone and the recorder. You don't always need to use a mixer. Sometimes they're built into a recorder or the camera. It's good to have a mixer if you have a separate audio person on site because they can control the audio from all the sources and sending to the destination so that there's no problems on this end. For instance, if you are hooked directly into a camera, you're the camera operator and you also have an audio person that does not have a mixer, the audio person can't turn down the levels if something's too loud. Therefore, you have separate control and the camera operator can worry about camera functions and the audio worries about the audio functions. So it's always good to have, have a mixer in line. Here's a very, very small mixer by Sound Devices. This is a nice little mixer. They make a variety of different sizes, but this one is very, very basic in appearance. It has three channels in, and they can be micro line and various microphone power, such as Phantom uh, or even T-powered and dynamic microphones and different voltages as well for your microphones that need, to have fan, that need to have phantom power. You have three input controls and really no output control. Everything that comes in goes directly out. You have a meter and then you have your output and you have your battery chamber. Very, very compact, but what's so powerful about the sound devices mixers is it has, it's, it's, it's an analog mixer, but all the functions are digital. So you have a digital meter that, that also doubles as a mode selector. So you can go in and punch in, you know, I want this channel to be at this volume. I want that to be at that channel, at that volume. Uh, different uh, internal functions, how it operates, what you're looking at. Uh, it's, it's very, very thick on what you can do in this. Unfortunately, on the older ones, you have to have a cheat sheet with it in order to know what function. So, you know, function 32, you set here. So, uh, the newer ones, actually, if you plug in headphones and listen as you go through the menu, there's a synthetic voice that tells you where you're at in the menu. So, that's very, very helpful. Um, these are very, very rugged. It's, it's solid metal. You can hear that. They uh, had takes three AA batteries, and they're pretty good with batteries. They don't really drink batteries so much. So you can probably operate most of the day on just three pin lights, and that's professional pin lights, the Duracell um, batteries that you buy that are the pro brands will last a long time. The next mixer we have is a Shure. This is an FP33. This is a bit heavier than that. It is a three channel mixer. You have three inputs. This one has a separate output. That's for your headphone. There are your two outs that go to camera or recorder. And you can slave several of these mixers together using a uh, multi pin and have more than three channels. This is an older style, but it still works great. It sounds just as good as that. Uh, the advantage of this is, is possibly to have different type of metering, to have a separate output. Uh, the headphone control is a little bit more visible on it, and the menus are very, very easy to get to. You have, have a thing on the top that tells you, you open the battery chamber, you've got more right here, and you've got dip switches. So it's, it's it, yes, it's old fashioned, but it still works. It gets the job done. We love it. It sounds great. The next thing we want to move to onto is recorders. This is an M Audio Micro Track 2496. It's the first generation of these. They've come out with one or two cents. They're great little recorders. They're about the size of a pack of cigarettes. And they've got quarter inch in, which adapt to line or mic in. On the side, you can select the level that you want in. You can even hold so that the switches don't accidentally get turned off. And you can have phantom power. 
Over here, you've got your level control here, your volume listening back and the record, and then you have a multifunction menu button that presses and rocks back and forth. It's a very nice recorder. It makes me a little nervous using these in the field because I, I don't really get any kind of confidence uh, level back on it, meaning I don't hear anything in the headphones that tells me whether it's recording or not. I just have to go on faith. But you do have metering that you do see when it's happening. The next thing up we have here is a Zoom H4n, a very popular recorder for today. It has uh, built-in microphones here and it has inputs. And what I like about this is it has multi-inputs. I can plug in an XLR or a quarter inch into either one of these. I'm not limited by that. Such as this, I have to convert microphones to quarter inch. And when I use the MicroTrack, I literally tape over the inputs. I tape over the cables onto the top of this so that they don't fall out. That makes me nervous. This is a little bit more secure in that. Um, both of these offer recording to um, flashcards and they uh, have various controls, MP3s, WAV files. The quality is very, very similar on these. They, they record very, very uh, good signal. Not the best, but, but very, very adequate for what we're trying to do. It's, it's as good as what you'd get in inputting into a camera. The last one I have, and I'm actually recording on it now, is an Ederol R4 Pro. Ederol also makes a smaller version of this, which is basically about a third of this size. It, it is about this big and a lot thinner and fits in a bag really nicely. It's the same function, it's just reduced. And it, this one has a hard drive built in and the smaller one uh, you record on flash drives. And for me, with my older eyes, I can see the meters on this better than I can on the smaller one. So if you do, have, if you do struggle seeing up close, you're gonna have to wear reading glasses or something on the other one. Even these are pretty, pretty small. Um, the controls on this are a little bit bigger, they're more spread out, you can see more of what's going on. Uh, what I like about this, besides that, is it has old style tape functions built right in. We know that it's recording, we see it on the meters as it's going. I have a big shuttle control, so if my client says, let's hear that back, I can play it back. I've got speakers on the front. They're very puny, but they get the job done for just checking to make sure everything's on there. So the nice thing about this, I've got four inputs, four dedicated inputs. And I've got, the outputs are not real good on this because it's not intended as a mixer like the uh, sound devices or the shore. But I have RCA outputs on this end that I can feed these out into a small amplifier that I bring with me, like such uh, powered speakers, something like that, just to play back. Um, I've got AES digital in and out on this, which is wonderful to have that if you have a mixer. Here's why I bought it, it has time code in and out. And I often record to time code built in at the same time code that the cameras are operating at, such as uh, you know, Panasonic Varicam or a RED or something like that. So we, we tend to generate the same time code. You don't need this. It's not necessary. So I want to touch a little bit on recording levels. We will go more in depth on these as we do location, but I want to get it in your head first. On the metering, as you see I'm talking, the average is about minus 20 to minus 12 or 14 on the meter. Zero is the loudest. If you go over zero, you get digital distortion that you cannot fix. It is unfixable. It's better to err on safety and go lower on the meter. So if, if you're in a situation where you don't know how loud someone's going to be, such as an interview for a documentary, uh, it's safe to hang around the minus 20 level on your averages. That way when someone laughs or coughs, it, you still have enough headroom in order to capture that. If it's a drama and you've rehearsed a scene several times, then you know where to 
put your levels. In fact, you can write them up and down as the scene progresses and as the takes progress. So a little bit more on that later when we do the location. The last one I have is a, an actual camera. So we have the inputs that we talked about when we talked about cables. Plug in here. If I'm coming out of a mixer, I would come out line level. And line level, there's mic level and line level that we deal with. Mic level is from a microphone where it is very, very soft in signal. So we have to use a preamp and raise the level up to line level. So line level is already very, very loud. That's the loudest signal that we deal with. So if you plug a microphone in and have it on line level, you're not going to hear the microphone. Vice versa, if you plug a line level signal into a microphone input, it's going to blow it out. It's going to be overmodulated. I mean, it's, it just sounds terrible. You'll know right away that something isn't right. So you have to pay attention to that. So on each mixer and camera and recorder input, you have a selector that says line or mic. Now I happen to have this on mic because I have a little signal generator in here that runs off mic power, but I would switch both to line if I'm coming out of the, uh, the mixer into the camera. This is very, very typical of most cameras that have built-in XLRs. I have selectors that say channel 1 select and that would be what is going to go on channel 1 of the recording and I have internal 1, INT1, input 1 and input 2. Internal is the microphone that's built onto the camera. We talked about those, they're no good, they're only good for ambient and b-roll stuff so if you were going to choose that, that would be that microphone. But we're going to say input 1, and that would be that XLR1 on the front. Channel 2 select means what's going to be recorded on the channel 2 of the, the videotape or the video file. And we're going to say input 2. We're going to switch it from internal right, which is this built-in microphone. Next, we have mic power 48 volts. If you're using a condenser mic that requires power, that is a shotgun mic, for instance, I would turn these on if you're plugging directly into the camera and bypassing a mixer or a recorder. These can be on or off. It doesn't matter. Uh, I typically, if I'm using line level only, I'll just go ahead and shut them off, but it's not necessary unless you hear a problem. Down here you have a thing that says auto and manual. Auto is automatic level. I put it on manual because I don't I want to control it all myself, especially with a mixer. On the back, we have the level controls for the audio. So I would if I have a mixer that has a tone generator, I would send a tone over and I'd set it to minus 20 or uh, we'll see on here there's a bar. I have a tone going right now and there's a little tiny dot right there and I will raise this and you will see that go up and down and I would set that at the appropriate level which is minus 20 or there's a hash mark on that. The last thing I do is go into the menu the last thing I do is go into the menu and I would select recording setup and I would scroll down to make sure that I have ALC off which is automatic level control so you actually have to go into the menu mic ALC and I make sure that that is off so you also have you have the auto manual on the front as a switch and you have to go into the menu as well there's other things that you would look for in here to make sure you're recording at a high sample rate such as 48 kilohertz and not 32 or something like that that reduces the quality Always use the best quality of recording you can. That's about it on the cameras. Um, make sure that your camera operator, if you're running a separate mixer, is wearing headphones and listening the entire time because you don't know. It may not be actually going onto, the, onto tape. You may see the meters move, but it may be, you may have a wrong input or something like this. This happens from time to time. It even happens to me. 
So you're gonna you're gonna run into situations where you forgot to check one simple little thing. So always move through your chain from your mic to your mixers to your recorders and d double check everything along the way. And it, having a camera operator listen on the other end gives you a safety valve or a safety check. That's it on mixers and recorders. We'll go more in depth when we go on location. We'll actually set it up. You'll see it in, wor in progress. You'll see us work around problems. I'm sure we'll have tons of problems that we actually didn't plan on, and that is location. That's what happens. And we'll solve those as they happen. And we'll um, have you go through the steps with us on beginning to end to make sure that we do have a quality recording in different situations using different methods, different devices, whether there are things that you can rent or things that you already have that you can borrow. And we're going to learn all kinds of neat ways that you can get good quality audio for your productions. Thanks. Bye.